they needed was a trigger to put it in place, and that is what 9-11 provided them with. They only think in terms of power. Democracy and constitutional states don't play a role. The truth is, conspiracies do sometimes occur. I can only say, the official story is so inadequate and far-fetched that there must be a different one. Michael Mitscher and Andreas von Bülow, two former ministers. The Germans served under Helmut Schmidt 25 years ago. More recently, the Brit was a minister in Blair's war government. These two experienced politicians have grave doubts about what the Americans call the war on terrorism. More importantly, they think there's a lot more behind September 11th than we're allowed to know. You have to consider what happened uh, before 9-11, at 9-11, and afterwards. And I think a much better explanation than the war on terror, which I think is bogus, is given uh, by the Project for the New America Century document. That was written in September 2000, just before the, or in the course of the US presidential election, which brought George Bush to power. It was written by a neoconservative think tank. Uh, it was called Strengthening America's Defenses. And what it says, I think, gives a much better explanation of what happened before 9-11, of why 9-11 was such a disaster, and why after 9-11 the US was so slow uh, to go after either al-Qaeda or bin Laden or didn't seriously try to do so. The former British minister is referring to this document, Rebuilding America's Defenses, Reorganizing the American Armed Forces. This document forms the basis of Bush's military foreign policy. It says, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the United States must protect the new American century using military means particularly. Saddam Hussein has to go. But more importantly, we have to obtain military control in the region to get a grip on the world's raw materials, especially oil. For this we need more troops, not less. It's hard to explain this to the American people. It will take years. Unless we can use an event similar to Pearl Harbor as a catalyst to turn public opinion around towards spending more money on this struggle for world domination. And exactly one year later, this new Pearl Harbor happened. And the government immediately said, this is our new Pearl Harbor. Rebuilding America's defenses was not America's first research into possible threats to the country. In 1997, Jimmy Carter's security advisor, Zbigniew Brzezinski, was worried about the lack of American control in Central Asia and the Middle East. In his book, The Grand Chessboard, he claimed that control could only be gained by pursuing a much more aggressive foreign policy, including warfare. At the same time, Brzezinski realized the Americans didn't really want a war. He claimed this attitude was only likely to change after a complete disruption. My wife was in the kitchen and called out, something terrible has happened. I saw it, and my first reaction was, who has anything to gain by this? 
Initially, I simply followed what was happening. I sympathized with the victims and wondered about the consequences. As I had some experience in the Secret Service, I soon started thinking, I wonder what exactly is going on. Is there something else that they're not telling us? That's quite a statement. But the fact remains, Brzezinski's total disruption happened on September 11th, enabling Bush to pursue an aggressive foreign policy. You have to consider what happened uh, before 9-11, at 9-11, and afterwards. Before 9-11, uh, the U.S. Uh, administration received a great deal of information that an attack was coming. Uh, first of all, um, there were 11 countries, including the U.K., which uh, gave their intelligence uh, to the U.S. authorities to that effect. Uh, Mossad uh, sent two experts in August uh, 2001, one month before 9-11, uh, to the States uh, with a list of 200 Islamic suspects, four of whom turned out to be the hijackers. None of them uh, were arrested. On the 6th of August 2001, one month before 9-11, Condoleezza Rice uh, had produced information about the possibilities um, of a hijacking which could be related uh, to the Intelligence uh, Council's report. Uh, there was evidence um, which came from Zacharias Massawi, who was arrested. He was a 20th hijacker, most people think he was. Uh, he was arrested, and the FBI agent wanted to investigate his computer, which we now know contained some clues as to 9-11, but the information came through uh, from the top levels of the C FBI that they didn't want uh, any arrests. Meacher is referring to the Moroccan Zacharias Massawi. He was arrested by the FBI in August 2001. French intelligence claimed he could be linked to Osama bin Laden and a possible attack on the United States. Massawi had a laptop when he was arrested. Oddly enough, the FBI agents weren't given permission to investigate it. Permission wasn't granted until a month later, on September 11th. The agents found detailed information about the hijackers and the attack. Why didn't the FBI get the chance to read this information earlier? Who prevented further investigation? Who prevented the investigation in Paris? Several desperate CIA and FBI agents protested to the bosses. The fact that FBI agents did warn people became clear in this document. Written July 10, 2001, the report was by an FBI branch in Phoenix. The contents were clear and alarming. Arabian men were being trained at flying schools and shooting ranges. The Phoenix FBI agents advised, the Phoenix agency insists on investigating these schools and these types of students, and to infiltrate. This warning was disregarded only two months before the attack, or so it seemed. The CIA was keeping an eye on 14 of the 19 hijackers, such as Mohammed Atta in Hamburg, without the Germans knowing it. Unknown to the FBI, other secret services were active too. Later, it became clear that the U.S. Army leadership knew long before the attack about the identity and whereabouts of the leading hijacker, Mohammed Atta. Intelligence officers were prepared to share this information, but the Ministry of Defense put a stop to that. The first hijack uh, occurred latest, about 8.20 a.m. For the next hour and 40 minutes, no aircraft was put into the air, even though there was at the U.S. Uh, Andrews Air Force Base, uh, 10 miles from Washington, D.C., a flight of F-16, a whole squadron uh, of top-level fighters. Uh, no planes were flown in from other air bases, um, even though at top speed they were certainly within range. Why did that happen? We know that where an aircraft goes on course, it is a legal requirement 
uh, that aircraft are put into the air to check on the position and purpose of commercial aircraft. Why on this single day did it not happen? In the previous nine months it had happened 67 times. It was a routine procedure. Why did this not happen on that very important day? That question has never been answered. To summarize, 11 countries warned about an attack on the United States. The CIA received a list with 200 suspects before September 11th. Security advisor Condoleezza Rice warned the president about a hijacking. The United States government ignored warnings by several FBI agents. Mohammed Atta had been identified as a leader of an al-Qaeda cell in 2000. Defense did not give out that information. After the hijacking, it took 100 minutes for the first fighter jets to take off. Remarkable facts. Had the independent investigators of the September 11th attacks nodded off?